Hey, what's going on guys? It's Ollie from Flight Comp and I'm back again to show you something a little bit different, something that I haven't really uh, played with before. Today we have the the new Samba Pike Paradigm uh, GPS Sport model uh, that came out maybe, I don't know, several months ago uh, that entered production. And I have one here on the bench. This is the first one I've ever seen, so it's pretty exciting for me to check it out. Uh, the first thing that I noticed when I pulled it out of the crate with the other planes, it came with a bunch of prestiges, which are lightweight airplanes, is, is how heavy this thing is. The parts are just like, I feel heavier than like F3B parts to me, so they're, they're quite stout and stiff, which is interesting. Now I'll be totally honest with you guys, I know absolutely nothing about GPS triangle racing, uh, the GPS sport class the models I know zero so all I'm gonna do is just show you the airplane and the parts today and just tell you uh, some very basic things and maybe in a future video I'll get into more detail because I, I really would like to get into this kind of soaring so uh, I have ordered one of these for myself and I, I'm looking forward to uh, getting it out and flying it and maybe getting some competition going here in the California area there's some other guys who are uh, interested in, in doing that as well so I made some notes on my cheat sheet here. Um, I'll put a link in the description to an interview with uh, Philip Kolb. Um, and he really just goes over the model. He designed it or helped design it. Um, so he'll give you all the finer points. I'll just hit some highlights that I garnered off that video. So go ahead and just please watch that video if you want like, like more uh, details about the model. So it's 4.7 meters in span, and I guess the limit is, is 5 meters, so this is 4.7 meters. They didn't go out to the full 5 meters. And the GPS Sport models are um, limited to the wing area too, so you know you play with uh, span and, and cord, and the models behave differently. But, but this is 4.7 meters. And just to go over some of the key points as far as the design goes from Philip Kolb, uh, he says that they designed the model to basically uh, maximize the thermal performance or uh, climb performance in a turn, obviously in lift. So, which I would imagine that's quite difficult with a model like this because it's extremely heavy. At least to me, it seems like these are heavy models. So, so yeah, the maximized thermal climb and to be able to uh, keep a steep uh, spiral turn or thermal turn at a higher weight. So those were the design criteria. And also to uh, maintain the fast glide performance. Um, so like straight line speed. Uh, so basically concentrating on increasing the thermal performance without sacrificing on the, the speed side of things. Um, the plane has a really large rudder and that's to, uh, to help with spiral, spiral stability and also a fairly long boom to help with spiral stability and the large rudder also will help with uh, straight line performance to keep it keep it going in, a, in one direction okay um, what else uh, they went with a four servo wing I guess there's there's models in this class that have six servo wings and they uh, Philip was saying that they they played with that idea but in the end they they went with a four servo wing because the uh, wing out here is really thin and you'd have to put a small servo in, in it to get it to work and it would be lightweight like low torque servo and they, I guess they didn't want to do that and it also keeps weight out of the very tips for uh, uh, to keep the inertia of the tips low uh, you know I guess that would, that would aid in the, the thermal turning all right, so uh, like I said, I don't really know about the GPS class at all, but I, I just kind of researched it briefly. So I'll just give you a rundown of what this model is designed to do. What is GPS triangle racing or GPS sport triangle racing? Basically, it's a, a triangle. So it's got uh, uh, three um, pylons, you would say, but they're just points um, in, in GPS. They're not, you don't, there's not like actual pylons. And you're basically flying around those and your model has GPS equipment inside that relays telemetry to you as you're flying it and you have a spotter with you who is, I, I guess he is monitoring that and telling you if you're on course and if you're coming up to a turn or whatever, you know. So you have someone that you fly with that relays information to you. 
So the triangle, uh, I believe, has the legs of the triangle are 350 uh, meters, and there's a speed heat and a normal heat. So the speed heat, I guess, from from what I gather, is just getting around each point as fast as possible. And then the normal heat is the most amount of laps in a sp specific amount of time, uh, usually 30 minutes. I don't know if that's for the larger airplanes or if it's also 30 minutes for the sport class. I re I'm really not sure. So the the normal heat would be where you were, I guess you would uh, be thermaling, you know, and trying to trying to um, keep enough altitude to to get around the course as many times as possible. And interestingly, there is a landing zone which uh, I read is 25 meters by 80 meters, so it's not like a spot landing or anything. You get a huge zone to land in, so I mean you could basically just come in and glide in. You, you know, you're not spot landing and dorking the model. And you have to start the course at, uh, um, I think, below a certain altitude. And if you go above the altitude, you're, you're penalized some way. But I don't know. I hope to learn a lot more about that stuff later on when I get into it myself. But for now, let's just take a close-up look at all of these parts so you can see what the construction is like and some of the details on the model. All right, this is going to be a little tricky because I have limited space and we're getting into some pretty big parts here. But here's the, the center panel. A little fairing in the front that matches the fuselage shape. Three bolts that are countersunk to mate it to the fuselage. And one thing that really surprised me was the, the cord of the... Um, the surfaces, the flaps and ailerons, they're, they're very narrow compared to what I'm used to looking at with F5J, even F3J, and uh, F3F, F3B planes. But I'm sure that is that is a uh, obviously something they they designed for a reason. I'm not sure what that reason is, but uh, there's also a little fairing in the back here that mates with the fuselage. And if we turn this over. See the center, so we're kind of. I'm used to seeing this because this is the multi same multiplex mounting style as the Prestige. Then we get the three countersunk holes on the bottom that mate with the fuselage. So we got a scratch right there. Um, really, really stout parts. Let me move this down a little bit. Let's see, I'm gonna show you the. Uh, the servo bay here for the flap. So you have the option with these to have the uh, LDS systems installed from Samba and that's what this looks like. There's uh, this MP Jet metal hub and these, you know, this system is like their traditional system they used on the 3J and, and F3B and F3F models. But they have come up with a new uh, aluminum arm, which is pretty cool. And th this, this is an extremely tight system with zero slop. Uh, this is a full-size X10, KST X10 servo. They recommend these servos for the flaps and ailerons if you want KST. Uh, they also have MKS options. Um, you know, details below in the description if you want to check that out. You can get, so you can get the plane with the IDS installed and you install the servo or you can get it with the IDS installed and also the servo installed, the, the covers are on and you can also get it without the IDS installed and you do the labor yourself because it, they, there is a charge for the labor and parts for the IDS and obviously you have to pay for the servo. So if you're a really good modeler and you like doing everything yourself and you, and you want to save some money, you can get the plane without the stuff installed and do all that work yourself. All right, the horns that go into the surfaces uh, are look like three millimeter uh, G10 fiberglass machined. So there's two on each side that are about three millimeters thick. Very stout, durable setup. Again, with that aluminum arm and a metal pin to hold that in. If we go over here to the uh, the tip side of the center panel where the, the, the tip panel mates, we have the joiner box and then we have a, uh, a box for the ballast. 
And then we have a pre-installed servo connector here, which makes uh, setting up your plane easier because that's already done for you. Then obviously we have the alignment pins. This ballast uh, tube goes all the way through the center panel. So you can basically load up the whole center panel with ballast. And they give you eight of these brass slugs. So you get eight of these and these go into the wing like this. And you also get some wood spacers, obviously to adjust your ballast load. Um, the ballast is an extra charge. But if you just look at the, um, the airfoil there, I've lined it up with the center, so that's kind of like the neutral position. It's, it's an interesting shape airfoil. You know, I'm, I'm not an engineer or I don't know much about aerodynamics, but it, it looks uh, a little different than what I'm used to looking at, so that, that's interesting. And you see it's marked GPS right here. Um, there's two versions. There's the GPS version, and I think there's like a normal version. And the difference, the differences are in the layups, and I don't know if the, the flying weights are different. Maybe the normal version is more of a sport model, so it might be lighter. But um, I'll get that information for you and put it in the description box. Well, right, let's check out the wingtip. Start from the root there. Again, we have fairly narrow control surfaces. And as we move out to the tip, you see how narrow they actually get. Put my hand there for comparison. And flipping over to the bottom, same servo setup with the uh, pre-installed LDS. And we have the same control horns here. No slop at all in this system. And we have these uh, machines, uh, aluminum alignment pins. And this hole is for the servo connector and the connector is in there. So you have to fish that out and plug it into the center panel, joiner box, and again, another uh, alignment pin. All right, we got the one wing joiner. So you get two of these, obviously. And this thing is really stout, built very strong. It, it almost looks like one F3F joiner. Fits pretty good, a little tight. You might have to do a little bit of uh, sanding with, uh, you know, some like 800 grit or 600 grit sandpaper, and just adjust that fit how you like it, so you so you can push it in really easily. It's got a uh, look how thick the, the carbon layup is. It's got three beams. Does you see that center beam right there, and then foam in the middle. Really nice. All right, moving on to the tail parts, we have the horizontal st stabilizer here. Um, again, I didn't mention this before, but all the, the, the flying parts, the wing, the center panel, the tips, the uh, vertical, they're all solid core technology. So they're machined, I think, row cell cores that are pressed into aluminum molds. So these are not hollow parts. The surprising thing to me is that the elevator is, is pretty small. Uh, it, it's a... Uh, smaller than a prestige elevator and it has a uh, plastic gap seal already applied i don't know if they all come like this i'm sure they do and obviously we have the uh the pin that mates to the push rod We have the vertical stabilizer with the rudder. Again, we have pre-installed gap seal here. 
and the horn is pre-installed, nice uh, machine G10 fiberglass horn. Nice fairing here to cover the linkage. This rudder is huge. It's massive. Get an idea of the thickness. And then if we look at the the front here, it's got a, uh, what is this, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's got like a, a octagonal shape molded in onto the inside. And that molds in, that jigs up with the, uh, the boom. And the fit is really quite well, really quite good. And I'll show you how that goes together here in a minute. Here we get the nose. So this is a separate piece that mates to the boom. It's a nice, well-defined step in here. And the back's just kind of chopped off. I imagine that their mold goes further. And then canopy. All glass nose with some carbon rod reinforcement that's laminated in there. This is quite a thick layup. It's extremely stiff. You could definitely do some damage with that. Got the canopy here, glass, carbon, uh, kind of like a flat carbon rod bonded in for a restraint. And the diameter of the nose is uh, 38 millimeters, so you'll need a 38 millimeter spinner. Molded in firewall, so you have to uh, drill your own holes for your motor and probably enlarge the center hole for the shaft slightly, depending on what setup you use. All right, check out this bad boy. It's the majority of the fuselage, the saddle area, and the boom. This particular one came with uh, KST servos pre-installed from Samba. Again, that's an option for you. Um, there is a charge for the installation. So there's an installation fee and then obviously you have to pay for the servos. We have the three mounting points for the wing here. And this area is cut out back here. I'm not sure why, maybe for uh, some equipment. And then we have the uh, pocket here for the multiplex connector. Here's the front. And let's see how the nose fits. Fits quite good. So let's go back here to the back of the model. This is kind of standard Samba affair back here as far as the design and the mounting system. We have a small pylon with three millimeter bolts. Then back here, there's a slot cut out. There's a ball link in here attached to this brass tube. And this is what operates the elevator. So you slide that pin on that's in the elevator and bolt, bolt the stab down. And back here we have Since this came with the servos installed in the fuselage, the clevis is already attached here for the rudder. And this is that kind of octagonal or hexagonal shape, a socket shape that fits the rudder. So let's see how that fits. Quite nice. I don't feel any play in this system at all. 
So a little bit of tape will, will get you going here. And uh, unlike the Prestige, I think once this is on, if you have a hard landing or, or something happens to your model, this won't twist. I like that a lot. They did a really good job with this, this interface here. Interesting, they have some big holes cut out here. Um, again, I'm not familiar with these models, so I'm not quite sure why this is done. Maybe it's for um, some wiring that you need to run or something. And those holes pass through here too, so I imagine you will be running some cables through here. All right, so um, the The flying weight uh, starts at 4,900 grams or 4.9 kilograms, and then so that's empty. And again, there's two versions. Like I said, there's the GPS version and like a regular version. So maybe the the regular version might be lighter. Um, but for this GPS version, you're, you're going to start around 4,900 uh, grams, and the maximum weight with the ballast is 7,000 grams or 7 kilograms. So here's some of the stuff you get with the kit. Uh, this is just the harness for the fuselage. And there's a couple of Allen wrenches in here that are for the LDS hubs. There's little set screws in the LDS hubs. And then they give you a roll of gap seal tape. So I would imagine that if you want to apply this to your flying surfaces uh, on the wing, uh, you can. They don't do it from the factory, but they provide you with this tape. And then with this model, uh, we just have the miscellaneous horns that came with the K KST servos. All right, guys, I think that's really all I have for you. This is just a very quick look at the parts, just to get you familiar with how the model is constructed and how it goes together. Again, the surfaces are are all um, solid core machined row cell carbon skins um, the fit of the vertical to the boom is quite nice the fit of the nose pod to the boom is quite nice so yeah if you're interested uh, go to f3j.com which is Samba's website you can go to my site flight comp um, but you know we basically have the same information I'm really looking forward to building one of these myself and seeing what this GPS uh, triangle racing is all about. So when I do that, I'll uh, do some uh, small build, short build videos. But there's really not much to do here, but maybe I can go over my uh, motor install and equipment install, batteries and everything like that. Because obviously you're going to have a lot of equipment going on in here uh, with these GPS models unlike some of the models I'm used to flying. Again, the link to the interview with uh, Philip Kolb will be in the description below. I really recommend you check that out if you're interested in the Paradigm or uh, GPS sport models. In general, I'll have links to the Samba website and my website. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, if we're lucky, uh, this is for a customer and a friend. And uh, I think if we're lucky, we'll go out when he maidens this and we'll do We'll, we'll take some video of that, which will be really fun. Maybe he'll even let me fly it, which would be awesome. So thanks so much, guys, for watching this video. Look out for some more Paradigm videos in the next coming months, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.